Today, folks, I think it's become quite apparent that we are now sitting in a brand new bull market because as much as the fixation was on NVIDIA earnings this week, it is the vast majority of the other half of the market that has been driving the growth outside of tech. I mean, you take a look at Microsoft and Apple and Google, these stocks actually haven't been moving that much, but oh my God, Berkshire's up 4%, JP Morgan's up 4%, Walmart, like just look at the green across the entirety of this spread. Walmart is continuing the transition to online and e-commerce that is starting to benefit them uh, generously con considering they're primarily one of the old brick and mortar retailer type type businesses. I mean, year to date now, NVIDIA is up 67 damn percent, over $800 a share. JP Morgan is flying to new all time highs here, uh, considering the lows that it hit. And for just a boring bank stock, I mean, it's up 6% from the recent all time high and 75% from the bottoms that it hit back in 2023. That last best buying opportunity was back in October, man. You remember those October lows? God, th those were the glory days now when you could have picked up the last real dip the market uh, experienced on the Canadian side of the border. It's not as advantageous. Unfortunately, we're getting some energy rallying here, but we're starting to see the cool down of some of the big, you know, insurance players like Manulife that were just crushing it um, last week. But however, there are still some really cool players in the Canadian markets like Waste Connections. It's up 16% year to date. Dollarama you know, obviously being kind of this inflationary hedge where everybody's going to shop now. Uh, this company's just been on an utter tear, uh, just a nonstop up to the right trajectory basically over the last five years. Just absolutely astounding performance. And just taking a look at my portfolio and where it sits today, obviously like yours, you are probably extending to continual highs. I mean, I'm sitting on a good 17,000 in cash, portfolio is up to about $214,000. For the first time, my retirement accounts are now back over 100K is I've been contributing uh, pretty nicely with the last paycheck I got this week, uh, some other you know private jobs that I've been doing just to kind of keep scaling this and growing it. And primarily my positions haven't really changed that much, but as mentioned, I've been periodically sharing the combined portfolio of that and my fiance's because you got to take some other, you know, they, she has some great tech stocks like Meta in there. Meta and Google are currently our two largest positions within our combined portfolios. Uh, Google, I finally shifted my last shares over from my corporate account into my tax-free savings account, which I could show you right here. We can talk about Google briefly. You know, I've got about 68 shares. I'm not really looking to buy too much more here, but I just really believe that Google is still the most suppressed S&P top 10 tech company trading at a multiple of only 26 in contrast to every tech company trading like well over 30 at this point, including Meta because of the suppressed nature around Google's unfortunate, you know, marketing behind their AI software, Gemini, Bard, all these things I think are still more superior than to the likes of even ChatGPT on how accurate they are with newer data. But people are just taking a lot of the, you know, thinking that Google search is dying and all this stuff. And I just, I believe that to be the exact opposite. So I think Google, has some real potential to run here still. So I'm really happy with being able to pick up the shares that I did it at a cost of around $140 per share. I think I'm sitting at a really good point. Actually, I think closer to a 25, 24 uh, price multiple there. But then we take a look at Tesla, which I actually bought more shares of in my TFSA. And this is a decision that I'm just making because of the continual destruction of the EV market. And I just think Tesla put themselves in a, a first mover's advantage heading into this recessionary environment. Because I mean, I just looked at Rivian earnings. They are getting decimated this year down 50 percent lucid is very likely to go bankrupt at the trajectory they're on they're losing like so much money per car produced right now ford is starting to scale back on their you know their lightning um, because of the ev demand is softening and they can't really cut costs they're already losing money on this a lot of these car companies they can't cut costs like tesla can to keep the demand and keep people that are looking to buy new cars making it more advantageous to buy evs right i mean general motors here like they're they're really scaling back on a lot even though they're doing very well this year uh, because of cost refinement. You know, they're getting some of the gross profits up. But the fact is, is they're really cutting back on the EV production side of things. They're supposed to build this big production plant in Michigan uh, in 2025. And they're saying that it needs time to better manage capital investments related to EV demand and implement engineering improvements to increase its profits. How Volvo, you know, or We'll talk about Volvo in a sec. Volkswagen getting absolutely decimated here, um, basically over the last few years. It is coming back quite a little bit this year, which is nice to see as well. But Volvo, I think I had a special place in my heart for because they had the Polestar, right? And Polestar was one of these incredible EV cars that I thought was a really great competitor to the market. But they've also been getting wrecked. And Volvo just said, hey, we're done with this. They're cutting 62.7% of their holdings in Volvo. They're like, we're not going to fund this disastrous, you know, car company anymore, even though it was a spinoff. And I thought these are cool cars. I actually test drove one of these cars. 
Uh, and they're they're just looks like they're going toast. They're going bankrupt, and the own co- the, the same company that made them is ditching them now, saying that we need to focus more on our own EV transition. But this was part of their EV transition. It doesn't make any damn sense. BYD I think is the only next comparable company to Tesla that's actually doing very well in the EV space, trading at a more favorable multiple, but also down kind of 50% from its highs, just like Tesla is, right? But when I just look at the comparables, and these companies are just car companies. Tesla's just a car company. I don't think it is, right? So that's why I'm buying it because I think not only is it going to dominate the auto industry, but all these guys are getting laggard behind. This is setting them back years. Whereas Tesla's already in in this wonderful phase where they're getting hit like everybody else, but they have the infrastructure already. They, they have the, the margins to shrink them and get through this tougher environment. Whereas these other companies, they're going to be screwed by the end of this, I think. It's very fascinating. These are just my personal opinions. But hey, at least I'm putting my money where my mouth is, right? So taking a look, at the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF on the dividend side of things. I'm kind of slightly discouraged here to some extent because I'm watching these other dividend ETFs like DGRO uh, absolutely crush it right now. I mean, this thing's up 4.19%, having a little bit more technology exposure to things like Broadcom and Microsoft. Um, not as high of a dividend, which has kind of kept me away from it, but it's hitting its all-time high, whereas you know uh, Schwab right now is still lagging its all-time high by about 4.6%, which... It is debatable, right? Because you do have to take into consideration from the all-time high back in 2022. They've been paying out way more of a dividend. So they might be a little bit more in line. I have to do the calculation on it, which we're going to be getting a dividend next month, uh, which the December dividend was basically an all-time high, whereas we went back to the first quarter. And that's usually when you get the lower dividend. But it's really going to be really neat to see, um, you know, if the dividend increases that have been, you know, all these big companies have been announcing uh, actually continue to take effect. And we continue to see some good compounded dividend growth here because I'm still kind of reinvesting that uh, within my RRSP. And again, it's just my most boring account. There's just nothing going on there. And I've kind of finalized my U.S. positions within my corporate account, which is just the S&P 500. As mentioned, I, I don't want to touch this because of the tax implications, um, which is why it was easier to move Google over. So I've got 83, 84,000 US uh, in capital value here, up 22%. Um, this this is just beautiful to see. It's kind of staggering to see that the S&P has come this far, um, just you know, in such a short period of time, and it's on this new bull run uh, that we just can't seem to get away from. And I'm curious to see what happens too when we start heading into interest rate cuts. This is one of those fine reminders too, as the markets round. I would still be cost averaging. Like I said, I picked up uh, shares in the S&P 500 today. Uh, I just bought another two shares here in my uh, TFSA as well. So I'm just looking at stocks that I think are suppressed. I'm going to continue to scale those. But as mentioned, I'm always buying the S&P 500 in tandem to these investments, not as aggressively as I used to be. I don't think there's as much value in the S&P as there was back in October when I was going a lot heavier, especially my corporate account. But I'm still going to cost average because these bull markets can go on for a very long time and you want to keep taking advantage if it keeps going up. But this is why I always have that cash kind of on the sidelines to some extent because I do anticipate at some point you're going to probably get a 5 or 10% correction out of the market. And you always want to be a little bit more aggressive when the market goes down. And that's where you kind of get these bigger bumps, um, you know, it, where you see your returns jump much higher. So like I said, I'm more patient with the S&P being a little bit more aggressive with some of these individual stocks that I think are a bit more suppressed that next year might have, you know, bigger potential comebacks, especially on interest rate cuts with Tesla. Google, I think, is just a ticking time bomb. Their earnings are great. They're trading far too cheap for the technologies they have access to with self-driving and a lot of their AI tools that incomparable, I still think, are superior to some extent than what even Microsoft's working with. And again, these are just opinions of my own. I could be completely wrong. Do not take this as financial advice. But as always, I will pass that question off to you. I'd love to know what you think in that comment section below.